Welcome to Pal World, a game about adventure and survival which is set in an open world populated with many creatures called pals. They all have various elements which you can use for building or combat. I have 100 days to explore as much of this beautiful island and discover as many pals as I can. My goals for this are simple. Catch all the legendaries and complete the pal deck, make an awesome base and defeat the 5 faction bosses. But without further ado, secure your snacks and drinks and join me in the world of Pal World. Well, well, well. Waking up to some weird creatures staring at my concerned face. It seemed like I had been in a shipwreck and I woke up to a tablet in the sand. The towers are the key and the tree holds the truth, whatever that means. Keys of them legs is thick. <laughs> what? <laughs> this was also my first time playing on a dedicated server. I actually tried it a bit on single player and it was so freaking good. There were so many options to spawn at which made it very hard for me to decide. It's five stars on everything. I mean, we're a god games, okay? We don't need this. Oh my goodness, there's so many options. After a few minutes of deciding, we locked on our target, Seabreeze Archipelago. Spread you out. We saw some new interesting pals on the beach for sure. This elephant teapot was kind of funny looking. What is that thing over there? Is that like a mad tea fan? The technology system is very similar to Ark Survival, which I absolutely love. There was even an egg on the beach that I didn't know what to do with. Okay, okay, so now I had to give my guild a proper name as well. Bruh. If you do enjoy this kind of content, make sure to subscribe and liking the video. <laughs> This beach was horrible. There was literally nothing here except two half bulky girls. There were a few water pals around, then a brown cherry, which is in fact a boss. I finally came across some trees so I could get the workbench going for tools. So I just smacked the tree until I was able to make that workbench. The night was approaching quickly, which means it will get cold and dangerous. So I have to make a box house really soon in hopes of surviving. The area here had a few pal balls here and there, so I just picked them up. By the end of the first day, I finished up the base since it was just a bit chilly outside. On day 2, I had to get the pal box going for claiming a base spot so the base wouldn't decay. And the pal box also helps to store your pals. Oh lord, my starter house was still missing a bit of roof protection. It was honestly a bit frustrating getting the last pieces to fit. Definitely some weird building mechanics. I grabbed a bit of stone so I could make a pal sphere so I could go capture one. Then I tried subjugating a monkey, but I got completely wrecked by them. I'm gonna die to monkey! Oh my god, like, what can I do? I got ganged up by them. Nope. The axe didn't do nearly as much damage as I hoped, so I made a club instead. I was underestimating how powerful the club was, and I killed my Lambo. Oh no! I found a couple of shiki pieces that I could capture. The first one went into the ball without any problem at all, but the second one failed at 96%! There was also a few of these eggs laying here and there I could grab, but they didn't seem edible at all. There was a cute helpless firefox swimming in the water that I rescued. So, on the pal box you can assign pals to work on things within your base, like farming, building and such. Sometimes it's very easy to get burnt when cooking food within your base. Oh hell! I'm gonna die to my own campfire! I wanted to get some kind of ranged weapon, so I queued up a bow in the workbench. I was gonna let my pals work on it, but despite me saying that, I didn't really understand how to make the pals work on the things I assigned them to yet. I gotta have a bed down as well, in case I die and I can't find my base. Then I placed down some pal beds so my worker pals wouldn't get stressed out and riot against me. That would be bad. After getting a few structures down, I was able to upgrade my base level to level 3, which means I get more slots for worker pals at the base. There was a nightwing up in the air I paid attention to. I kinda wanted it, but it was quite high level for me right now. So, I was catching a few fox sparks instead. Capturing all of these pals also gives me experience to my character, which is paramount to my progression. I stumbled upon some funny looking shiki piece chilling in the water. This is what makes the game great. 
Afterwards, I captured my first lamb ball and then I picked up one of these chests. There will be a lot of these chests scattered across the entire island you can loot. Further down, I saw a shiny green object on the ground. It was a mega sphere, which is the next level of pal ball. I capture a second lamb ball before heading back to the base before midnight. The next day, I set up some more beds for my new worker pals and I cooked up some lamb ball kebabs. Dude, my chicken is so useless. It's just jumping around in the base. It's not doing anything. Meanwhile, the lambs were carrying things and giving them to me. My tools were wearing out from most of the farming, so I had to put down a repair station to solve that issue. I put down a feed box for my pals and a berry farm, so they wouldn't starve and become like the depresso. Then a cat simply walked into my base at the perfect time that I just captured. I then had an intruder coming into my base checking out my stuff. Like, yo, come on. <laughs> I saw an interesting floating head swimming my way that I just had to capture. I didn't know what to use it for yet, but I wanted it. This is kinda interesting. If you time it perfectly, you can apparently tame one of the pals dead. It's quite concerning, but it kinda just works somehow. I placed out the stature power, which is for increasing my capture strength and a certain pal's power. A bit later, I placed out one of these pal gear workbenches, which is for making saddles and such for your pals. I only had to place down that workbench to further upgrade my base level. Well, we ran into a problem where the service stopped responding. It's lagging quite a bit, actually. Yeah, I can't destroy this tree. What? Oh, I, oh. I, I DC'd. Oh. Well, there goes the server. I queued up a passive shield that will help absorbing damage since capturing some of these pals hurts. I also made a parachute since gravity is really not my friend. I also discovered that sliding was a thing in the game. That's some good stuff right there. Okay, since I had a farm, I had to manage it myself since I didn't have any pals to do it for me. I had some monkeys outside my base I could try capturing to do the farming for me. One of them got destroyed by my workers. And by the end of the night, I picked up one of these green effigies which is for improving my capture rate. I ran around capturing a few pals for my tutorial thing. While I was farming, I had a few visitors come over to look at my awesome base. Me and Johan went out for a trip and I stumbled upon these dorky looking birds, the Toko Toko. They can apparently suicide bomb. What? In the distance was King Sweepa, a roaming boss that could be killed or captured. Capturing all of these pals makes me run out of pal spheres very fast. So after a bit, the gang spotted the dungeon and wanted to try it out. There are a lot of thugs in this dungeon to get rid of as well. They drop a lot of goods. I require this now. Then I managed to find a path towards the boss, which is a tombat. I just had to wait for the gang to catch up. The fight was over quickly and no one wanted to capture it. At the end of the dungeon, there will be two chests to pick up for blueprints and other items. And then you can simply teleport out. After we were done with the dungeon, we ventured out to scout around the place. I got myself a dire howl. I saw some ancient civilization kind of structure in the distance we were heading towards. On the top of this cliff, there was a red chest that required a silver key to open. But I didn't know how to get any of the keys just yet. Apparently, the mountain was incredibly hot up here, so we had to skedaddle. Oh my god, it's so hot down here. Up here. Okay, leaving the mountain, boys. We ran into a couple of dinosaurs. They were cute, but dangerously powerful. Akisa died to one of them. Oh my god, it killed me. <laughs> I was gonna try my luck at capturing one. I got it. Nice. Towards the end of the night, we had to leave Akisa's body since it was gonna get cold, like her corpse. On day 5, Akisa came running into me heading for her body bag in the super dark forest. After a lot of running, I could finally see my home after this scary adventure. And as soon as I got home, I replaced that stupid monkey with the dinosaur, which went to bed immediately. What? <laughs> there was a roaming nightwing near my base that could be a potential flyer to use in the future. So I did my best in capturing this avian. And a bit later, I placed out a logging site structure. This particular structure is used for pals that can automatically farm wood for me. There is also a stone variant. 
So after farming a bit of wood, I was able to make the crusher now. It can crush down rocks into pallium, which I use for various pal things. Upgrading the base was also quite important, since I will be able to use more pals to do my farming done. Much later, I was gonna meet up with the friends at the broken shirt, and then someone took down their pal box, which booted us off the server. Whoa! Oh, what was God. that? I think it started lagging because Mike is running in place for- Oh, oh yeah. yeah, crash! Yeah, they crashed the server! <laughs> oh, I was <laughs> After we got back on, I grabbed the flight path and I caught up to Kisa. Okay, are you ready to see this cow? In two seconds. Yes, let me see the are you cow. Ready to oh, see oh. what we put in, paid an exorbitant amount of money for? Oh my god! It's so, worth it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it. That's kind of funny. <laughs> it's beautiful. We were looking for one of the dungeons to attempt together. There were so many red bars in here. You can almost think that they're enemies. Well, it continues. Oh my goodness, what is this? Ooh. Oh, this one's new. I've not seen this one. Yeah. Okay, what kind of boss is it? Oh. If it's Sherisword, it's mine. I found it on you. Yeah, you, you can have a Sherisword. Oh, this way. No. Johan, take one of the boxes. Oh, yes. I want this one. This one looks cool. After we were done, I got back home. I made a harness for my dire howl so I could ride it. Traversing around the map on foot takes just too long. I put up a hot springs to help with the sanity for my pals while I heard some shime kind of sound. It was a shiny cativa right outside my base. The cativa had some quite unique abilities. Oh, what is that? By the way, shinies have a special attack. Awesome. I put up a fortune now as well, so I could get some ingots made for some better weaponry and tools. I could also assign a fire pal to work the forge, so it will produce stuff faster. Meanwhile, I was waiting for the metal to cook. I had to go to the dungeon to farm some more. I didn't live in a good area for it, so this was my only alternative. Afterwards, I decided to try killing myself, so I could spawn in another area to unlock fast travel there. I only did this because I couldn't get my hands on some starter pals and metal. And there we go, I unlocked a few of them, and my inventory was still back at home. It was time to retire that old stone pickaxe. I placed down a high quality workbench so I could get rid of the shitty one since the durability was horrible. Later that day, I ventured out into the wild world and I came across this big obelisk tower thingy. It was apparently for fighting the first faction boss. Then I ran up this mountain to look for a special early boss you can tame. I didn't see him around, so I waited to see if he would spawn in. After a bit of waiting, Shillit spawned in and I was trying to get him low to capture him. I got lucky and I captured him on my first try. So once you capture or kill one of these world bosses, they will give you one ancient technology point and some civilization parts for crafting. The technology point is for using in a separate row here to learn these special technologies. And by the end of the night, I grabbed a bit of metal before going home. When I got back home, I noticed that one of my pals were oh. incapacitated with no explanation how. I mean, I have food for my pals, so it might have been killed by a wild pal. Akisa told me to get over to her, since she was gonna surprise her friend with the gift. Oh my god, it's so cute. Where is it running? Where is it going? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Bruh. I was back at Chillet and I was gonna capture it again. I wanted a few of them to raise an army of noodles. And plus, it drops the ancient civilization item I needed. While I was exploring a new area, I didn't pay attention to the big guy nearby, which killed my wolf in one attack. Okay, my dire wolf died. Oh no. Not too far away, I spotted a van worm that was a bit higher level than me, but I wanted to attempt catching it. To be fair, I thought it was gonna be way harder to capture it. And then I saw it. I saw one of Akisa's favorite animals, so I just had to capture it to show it to her. Somebody already showed me one of those and they're adorable. Well, with the loss of my wolf, I didn't have anything to ride on. 
So I walked around mindlessly until I stumbled upon a boss dungeon. Oh, what the f Oh well. I saw a fast travel nearby, so then I was just gonna head home. On day 9, it finally happened. My first raid. Oh my god, I have a Toko Toko implode unit raid. Joan came over to my base to assist me with his Toko Tokos, but they didn't get that far. They were mostly us glitching out in the water. I got tired of accidentally stepping into the campfire, so I moved it outside for my own sanity. Hubby, I swear, it doesn't matter where I put that stupid campfire. If it helps for me, it doesn't help for my pals. This area was kind of trash though, since I had no access to metal. I hate this spot. <laughs> well, I decided to go clear this dungeon again, since I needed a bit of metal as usual. But when I got to the boss arena, I couldn't see the boss at all. And the door at the end was closed. I guess I didn't clear the dungeon enough? Aw, oh, come on. It finally spawned in a boss, but it wasn't an exciting one. Oh well, the pelt armor green blueprint from this box here wasn't bad at all. At least something good. Okay, it was time to attempt capturing my first sweep up boss. I wanted that big boy experience. It was getting way too close for me with his minions. They do so much damage. There was also a Gumos nearby, which is in fact easier than Sweepa. On day 10, I put out the ranch. The ranch will produce all sorts of interesting stuff like wool if I put some lamb balls in it. Then I made the worst mistake ever in the game. I entered the dungeon with only 30 minutes left on it. And for some reason, I couldn't get the boss to spawn in nor find the exit again. I believe the door closed on me, so I was literally stuck in here. The exit was open again after like 20 minutes of waiting, so I managed to escape this hellhole. Alright, back at the base, I decided to make my first crossbow. I was tired of this twig with the string, it didn't feel powerful enough. I was once again fighting Sweet, but hopefully capture it for experience, but he died initially capturing him. Despite that, I unlocked the new Mega Spheres and a Sphere Workbench. There was also this PAL Essence Condenser, which can be used to merge multiple ones into one strong being. I was inspecting what kind of roaming world bosses I could take down. I couldn't see anyone in my kind of level though. There was even a level 45 German tide on the map. I didn't see it, I must have missed that. So I went out there to take a closer look at it. On my way there, I had to capture an Arsox. I don't know what to use it for yet, but I needed it to complete my PAL deck. A Univolt might come handy as well, or maybe just for sheer experience. I came upon an empty camp with an imprisoned PAL. That's literally free XP. Okay, it was now time for some revenge. I spotted the Relaxaurus that killed my wolf from before, so now I'm gonna capture this goofy looking dinosaur. Finally, I had arrived at the lake where that level 45 German tide was hanging around. But then, I got attacked by some kind of water serpent. It was annoying me a lot, so I just captured it. I decided to leave instead, since everything was just too high level for me up here. I didn't feel like dying. I was more worried about finding a new base location, since metal is incredibly hard for me to gather in my area. By the end of the day, I captured a shellet instead. Basically trying to level up to level 15 so I could make a saddle for my Nightwing. The next day, I decided to go and capture a few more bosses for experience. I managed to hit level 15 on the Gumos capture. And that means I unlocked the saddle for my Nightwing so I can get into the skies. On my way back home, I spotted a Kativa Shiny that was super easy to capture. Oh well, I got back to my base to discover that one of my workers was dead again. Like for real? How? How did he keep dying? Oh well. To get the Nightwing saddle, I was missing out on a few items, so I went out to gather it. Just a bit of more cloth, then I was able to craft up the saddle. 
Yay! Now I got the flyer, so now I can go off exploring for more possible base locations. I finally saw something that caught my eye. Visually, the waterfalls looks very cool, but that's not what's so cool about it. It's what's on top of it. I can basically build my base around all that metal. I don't have to travel that far to farm it. This will be a very good potential for a base. So early into day 13, I was taking down a few things in my starter base to prepare to move to the new location. I was slowly coming up with some sort of a base ID. The plan was to split up the base in two, so putting half of it down here and the other part up the stairs. I honestly wish there was some snapping for foundations, for ceilings and stairs, but this was gonna be good for now. I was scrolling through the technologies and I saw some defensive walls I kinda wanted, but it was quite high level for me to get now, but something I would work towards at least. Then I put up some boxes so I could move my resources over here from the old base. Luckily my old base was built very close to fast travel. Moving the chunky wood and stone was gonna be a real challenge since it was so freaking heavy. So I built a box next to the teleporter to ease the transportation. Well, moving this would take a few times. Huh. I had to take down the rest of my base as well. And by the end of the day, my old base was gone. So I kind of wanted to go with an open style kind of a build so the pals wouldn't get stuck inside buildings. It was also very difficult for me to decide where to place everything. I usually have my builder Akisa to back me up on this, but she wanted to have her own base. And while I was building my base, the game decided to raid me. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Why is the raid? What a perfect timing. God damn it. So, I kinda just went out into the wild again to take down some world bosses because I was so tired of just building. And when I came back, it was time to continue on the building. <clears throat> it's day 15 and the base was still somewhat under construction. I was liking the layout of the land here so far. Akisa then later came over to look at my new spa. She was impressed that I had access to metal literally one feet away from my base. She didn't like the build at all though. <laughs> I was then building my cozy base that I would live inside. It was gonna be kinda default for now until I could come up with some better ideas for aesthetics. I had to block off the lake so my pals wouldn't jump in and get stuck in the lake. Or possibly drown. I don't know if that's a thing though. Okay, well, it's day 16 and the base was still under heavy development. It's also kind of funny how you can literally just pick up the pals like they're just a big ass plushie. I went over to shell it again to try capturing it for experience, but I overestimated my skills and got completely Oh well, I got back to my body safe and sound, but now Shillet had healed up to maximum, just because I was an idiot. Slowly gaining some momentum to glide jump was incredibly fun as well. I put out the medicine workbench by the end of the day, which is for making medicines for all of the pals whenever they get sick or annoy me. On day 17, I had made the second floor for my pals so I could place out more beds and such. Then I ventured out into the wild to collect as many of these red bears as I could. My pals were constantly in pain and hangry. This was only temporary for the moment until my bear farm could produce enough of its own. I decided to give the green tail a try, quite a ferocious little kitty with a very concerned smile. Holy Jesus. <laughs> okay. That was easy. On day 18, I was standing AFK while I was having a raid, but apparently the raid responds under the base? <laughs> what? They literally line up in a pile for me here. Wow, that was satisfying. Back at the base, I placed out a mill which can process wheat into flour that I will need for a lot of cooking recipes. I am Mike Oliver now. Then I placed out this huge looking cylinder thing. It's just a pal essence condenser for merging multiple pals into one. I started the next day by queuing up the table for a green pelt armor set and farming up the metal ore. I just love how close I live to the metal now. I don't know what the hell happened, but my pelt armor is still not finished. These pals, I swear to god, they're slacking off like usual. They need punishment. 
finally, there we go. I got some upgraded armor, so no more of this paperish armor. I don't want to die to stupid lambles or anything similar that will make me bald. I was curious what kind of cooking recipes I could make with the flour, so I queued some of them up. Hopefully this time a pal would come work on it. Wishful thinking, Mike. Wishful thinking. Oh, we can make some bread. Oh, wait. That's kind of straightforward. Wow, I didn't know this was a thing. Jamfeld bun sounds delicious, especially 10% more defense bonus. Akisa snuck into my base with her stupid creepy cat that looked like it was from some kind of anime. Well, not really. She came over to lend me her epic crossbow blueprint she got from a dungeon. I was very excited to use it, but man, this was gonna take an eternity to craft. Holy by the end of the night, I decided to go fight the green tail while I was waiting for that crossbow to be made. But I got completely screwed over! Getting back to my body was kinda scary since it was cold and dark, but in this case the game devs were actually kind and made every pal sleep when it's night. So it's basically a perfect time to go for some sneaky sneak attacks. The crossbow was finally done. Boy, look at that damage! almost 450 then i went out to capture a sweeper again which almost got me killed which could have been embarrassing a bit further away i ran into a wandering merchant that sold quite a lot of interesting schematics mostly just hats so nothing overpowered okay after the farm had been pretty active recently i had a lot of berries now i queued up to craft a better shield now as well since the starter one was just shit Afterwards, I decided to go clear a dungeon where the boss was a small little vixie that actually killed me with its cuteness. Ah. Yikes, that's a bit embarrassing, honestly. <laughs> Great, so now I had to try recovering my items again. But to my surprise, there was no nothing in the end of the arena. What the hell? I was worried that when I died, it deleted my inventory. Okay, so that really gave me a scare. So when I got back out again from the dungeon, there was a body there. So me dying basically respawned the bosses multiple times, so I fought something easier this time instead. So from this dungeon, I got a high technical manual that gives me one technical point. Back at the base, I had to take care of some raiders again, but this time they seem to be inside the rock. Some of the air abilities seemed to cleanly kill them off, however, didn't matter if they were inside the rock or not. Are you freaking serious? My freaking mega shield wasn't done yet! My pals are such slackers, I swear! This is making me lose hair, I'm actually going bald! Despite the stupid freaking mega shield, I was looking through the pal deck and there were so many I haven't yet captured or discovered. Will I be able to actually pull it off in 100 days? Oh, that's gonna be tough. The next day, I stumbled upon another shiny cativa, but I didn't want more of those cats, so rest in peace as you. The wonder merchant was still here, so I bought some hat blueprints for now. Alright, I think it's time to attempt the Bronchary World Boss. It's a bit higher level than me, but I'm still gonna try it. With 4 HP to its name and 19% capture rate, I was throwing pal balls left and right. I so wanted it when it was literally 4 HP. Oh, that feels good. Capturing something that is higher level than you is always so satisfying. Okay, well, Akisa was back at my base. She was gonna drop off the pelt armor blueprint she borrowed, so I gave her the hat blueprints that I knew she would like. Akisa wanted to go on an adventure with me, so I teleported over to the Godfin's turf, only to get shredded by the Godfins. My night wind didn't last that long. I died. Well now, I had no flyers, so adventuring on foot is gonna be dangerous. I'm not sure where Akisa was heading, we mostly just ran around until we saw something interesting, I guess. We actually saw something crazy. It was some kind of ancient civilization building that I didn't know what to make of. 
On day 23, I ran into some weird ass looking bird. I wanted it. It was goofy, kinda looking, and super easy to capture. We were heading to one of these islands up in the north to visit our pal Juan. But before we were heading there, I wanted to attempt capturing this Nightwing boss. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be harder to catch, but nothing's too hard for the pal master. Well now, I could replace that old hawk for the boss variant. He was a thick boy. Then we ran into Johan. He was on the beach visiting the merchant. Look when he's walking. Johan built a cute little base next to a big massive hole. I kind of forgot that the game had emotes. The dance emote was kind of whack, not gonna lie. Oh my god, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Akisa did some spins of her own or became literally Beyblade inside Johan's house. The next day, I wanted to attempt the Pen King boss. He had these stupid pangolet minions that were scared. I didn't really pay attention, but I think my brancher one shot it. I was just too slow to react. I was looking in my map to see what bosses I could attempt instead, but all of these were like 10 levels above my own, so it didn't feel like such a great idea to be honest. After doing a sweeper run, I ran into shiny Lambol close to that, so I tried capturing it. It might produce wool faster in the ranch if it's a shiny. Well, I had hit level 20, so that means I could finally make my first Gigasphere and some weapons eventually. That's poggers. Dealing with the casual raids were not as bad anymore, especially for the easy lineup. While I was opening some wild eggs I incubated from my adventure with the Kisa, I noticed that my friends were literally stealing my medal. Johan was having trouble with his game and apparently Vast told us that there was a respawn button. <laughs> I didn't know that at all. Or do the respawn thing in the start menu. What? Didn't even oh. know that was an option. <laughs> I did not know that was an option. <laughs> I didn't There's know that respawn. Well, well, we are all walking towards the first boss. We still haven't done it. No. So on yeah. day 25, it was finally time yeah, to go into the first the boss fight. But yeah. apparently, Ikisa went in alone without us. Why am I the only one in? So in the meantime, we were all strategizing how we were gonna do this boss fight. Alright, here we go. What is this Electa buzz? Okay, no one dies. It's very important. Hey. <laughs> oh my god. Remember which one's the dodge button. <laughs> oh, it has 60,000 health. Oh, it had 30 when I went in by myself. Yeah, I think it's up when there's more of us. Yeah, this was gonna be a cakewalk. The boss weak point was basically the rider or the headshots on the grease ball. This was kinda easy. Not for the fact of doing this with two other people, but I think I was massively over leveled for this fight. Except the rider takes a whole bunch of damage if you can hit her. It's a bit it's a bit hard when uh, the boss is glitching up, you know. Oh la la. Yes. Boss eliminated. And once you beat the boss fight, you unlock the fast travel on top of the tower. I was a dumbass, and my ass fell down the tower, but I didn't die for some reason. Ow! I'm pretty sure I would have been a pancake. They wanted to do the boss fight again, just for some experience. Woohoo! Alright, since I was the appropriate level, I wanted to upgrade some of this stupid wood to stone. Because I've seen on Twitter that people have lost their builds to pals that rage you with fire and burn down your whole house. On day 26, I placed out one of these large toolboxes, which improves the handwork of speed of pals and myself. So something very interesting happened to Ikisa that she wanted to show us. Where's your house? Oh, oh house. what? My house? It's you mean the one that was there? <laughs> <laughs> I had ventured out quite far into an unknown territory, but there was a few van worms which frankly did a lot of damage to me. 
Then after that, I went over to the Syndicate Tower again to take down Zoe and Grisbolt for some easy levels. After I defeated the tower boss, I went over to Shelly to capture him again and I finally hit level 21. And that means I unlocked the musket gun. That's my first gun. On day 27, I forgot to mention this. Since I hit level 21, I unlocked the bandworm saddle, so no longer do I have to fly around on that nightwing. Then I shipped down the metal like usual in my base. Man, it feels so good having your own personal metal ore spawning within your base. On my way to the bushy boss, I got attacked by a couple of van worms, so I had to capture them since they were a nuisance. Okay, so bushy seems to be somewhat of a samurai and my van worm was completely useless against him. I saw that my health was incredibly low, so I was a coward and I hid behind this pillar. Yeah, that didn't end well. His stupid attack was just too fast for me to react. Old man, old brain, you know. I no longer have the reflexes of a 12-year-old like I used to. Alright, I got my gear back and I decided to do a tactical retreat for now. Back at the base, I had a Tundra outfit queued up so I would be able to visit the snow zone next to my base at some point. On day 28, I had a lot of these stupid goo moss that I just condensed into a singular one. I don't know what to use them for really. A bit later, I captured one of these moose arenas and they produce milk you can use for recipes as well. Back at the base, my r socks and van worm were cooking me up some fatty pancakes for me to enjoy. My mega glider was also done crafting as well. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but I think it reduces the stamina drain whenever you use it. By the end of the night, I decided to go fight the grass boss again. My hoarding can never stop. I gotta cast them all for experience, obviously, and the pal deck. The next day, I ran into mercenary on the beach with the wounded knee. I just helped her get into the gulag. Screw it, it was time to check out this dragon boss here. It was a really cute one called the Quivern. It didn't do too much other than just stand there and look cute until I was overwhelmed with attacks. Okay, it wasn't too difficult to catch, but boy, the saddle required me to be level 36. I'm level 22! I went over to Akisa to check out her new base she was building, and also to show off the quivern. That's beautiful. I want one too. Honestly, this was a pretty good spot for her because of the metal right next to her. Alright, here we go. Yeah. Round 2 of trying to catch Bushi. The fight wasn't too bad now, and I managed to capture him without dying. Me first time doing Bushi was kind of rough. I discovered I had unlocked something called a hip lantern that would light the way for me during the dark nights. Then I was crafting up a mega grapple gun. I was kind of curious how cool it would be to be a Spooderman. While it was being crafted up, I went over to attempt Catris. And the boss fight wasn't as hard as I thought. Yes. Oh, nice. Then I got a raid from one of the most dangerous beings in the game. This herd is the very ones that will burn down your house, and this time around, they were walking up the mountainside, which leads to my base. I felt completely useless, exactly like my walls. They just walked through it like it wasn't even there. They just walked through my base. At the start of day 30, I was just collecting my daily dose of metal. And after that, I went out to the desert area for my first time to look for possible new pals to capture. But I don't want any of these stupid tokotokos. There was this weird looking fish flopping on the sand called a Doomood. I didn't know what to use it for, to be honest. I decided to fight off these stupid bandits, which was a mistake. No! I got back to the camp and I rescued that locked in pal. There was something really exciting, a turtle called Dig Toys. Yeah. I definitely wanted it since it looked like an absolute beast. I then flew into this pal called Anubis. It was an extremely high level, so I skedaddled out of there ASAP. Way later, back in base, I was crafting myself up my first weapon, the musket. Then I just had to try it out. Damage output was impressive, but the reloading speed was shit. The next day, I was fighting off a weakened Mamorest, 13 levels above my own, by the way. It killed my Van Worm in an attempt to weaken it more, but I managed to capture it with one of my Gigaspheres. Phew! It's always satisfying capturing something way above your own level. I actually stumbled upon a small settlement 
but there was a merchant here I could buy stuff from or sell. That is gonna be extremely handy in the future. Then there was also this pal merchant to sell your favorite pals too for some gold. I didn't see too much value in gold right now, but it will definitely come handy in the future. Then I was placing out a flame cauldron, which will speed up the process of the forge. I'm not quite sure how this keeps happening. Most of my pals get stuck outside the base all the time. Okay, it was about time to try out these new dig toys, so I was crafting up a headband for it. Okay, I did some reading on Twitter, and it told me that dig toys was one of the best ones for mining. The metal, oh my god. On day 32, I went over to the tower boss again to fight the Grizzbolt. I was just curious to see how powerful my musket was. 1000! Oh my lord! Besides saying that, I should have grabbed a lot of more bullets for this. Ha! I finished the fight with my last true bullet. Then I went into a dungeon next to the tower to ground up some pallium for spheres. It was quite expensive for me making spheres without that pallium. Okay, so now I crafted up 300 coarse bullets for my musket since I learned not to walk around with 10 bullets for a boss fight. Some of the stuff you get from boss fights, you can actually sell it to the trader for quite hefty amount of gold. I mean the roaming world bosses, not the tower ones. Oh my god! Okay, that was a, that was a good sale. I had to go over to Kisa's base to show off the dig toys. She got some ideas what she wanted now, I'm sure. Oh, Lee Beyblade. Oh my god! I logged into all of my pals starving and being depressed overfull and god knows what else i had to go through them individually and force them to eat the sketchy medicine i bought from the trader all right this time i went over to yuan's place since he has a boss dungeon right up here i haven't attempted yet nothing frightens me more whenever they get out of the pal sphere and i attempt to capture them and they chase me down instead it's downright scary I flew over to a lake where there was an Azurobi roaming about, but my dumb ass didn't think of its element, which tragically melted my Van Worm and literally destroyed me. I died. I spawned back at base just looking at all these depressed pals. It's like me. I was super depressed how dumb I am not thinking of strengths and weaknesses, and my weakness is brain IQ. Let's round two begin. This time around, I brought my bronchire with me, which should be Azurobi's weakness, at least the water part. It was dangerously close to me, making my hands sweaty. After some sweaty minutes and 10 megaspheres, it finally went into the ball. I had a really cute Kelpsy, <coughs> Dratini, attacking me with his cuteness, which I ended with a bullet. Okay, after getting to the base, I counted I needed about 5 high grade syringes to get rid of my pal's severe depression. So I forced my felba to do the job since it had level 3 in medicine production. Basically just means the higher level, the faster it can make the thing. On day 34, I went over to the Quivern boss fight with my friend Ikisa. She was so eager to get one of her own, but to our surprise, it was still sleeping. Perfect time to get some good damages on it while the beast was sleeping. Well, that's awkward. In the midst of battle, Akisa told me that she didn't bring any Mega or Giga Sphere, so in the end, I captured it myself. Afterwards, we went over to the arena to fight the King of Pangolets, the Pen King. But during the fight, he apparently slid out of the arena somehow, so we had to reset the fight. Just because we reset the boss fight, I just had to die, didn't I? <gasps> I died. After I retrieved my armor, I went to kill a lot of deer since I needed leather to repair my broken armor. I was killing most of the things I know that gives me leathers and organs and <coughs> hal fluid. <laughs> Bruh. Up this hill was a black market guy who was selling me a bunch of pounds. Nothing out of the ordinary though, but I bought a few for XP to my character. I was out hunting a few pals to capture for experience, so apparently if you catch 10 of individual types, you get a massive XP gain to your character. I didn't notice it until now, but the bracelet you make for the daydreams apparently stack, so you can have 5 hovering around you all the time. And while I was exploring, I saw a very shiny cinema, and like usual, 
being the pal master, I couldn't help myself but to capture this ugliness. There was also a big tree up in this hill here with a few skills I could collect from my pals. The next day, it was time for us to merge our guilds together since we can have two pal boxes down. Akis just had to show off her stupid land ball. But despite her land ball, let's just welcome Akisa to my camp. That's brutal. I showed Akisa in the distance that there was another tower boss up in the ice mountains, so that's what we're aiming for next. I was extending the workspace a bit to prepare for expansion and more structures I will eventually unlock. So I spent the entire day just setting up the base for the new design, so I was basically just sorting out and planning things. On day 37, I was still building the base, but I felt like I was just wasting time, but it was hard trying to get the style I kinda wanted and I would feel satisfied with. Akisa came over to show off her daydreams. She was enjoying having an army of them following her around. And like usual, every time I do something fun like building or chilling in base, there just has to be some nuisance happening. On day 38, me and Akisa ventured into the wild, exploring the lands for possible new pals we haven't yet discovered. We grabbed a lot of effigies so we can get better capture skill eventually. But the real reason was that we were gonna come visit the snow area and look at the new tower to see if it was available. There were a lot of new pals I hadn't seen before, even this foxicle. Akisa wanted it badly and was trying her best to capture it. I'll eventually come by here and capture it on my own at a certain point. I saw a very interesting new rock that we could harvest, and to my surprise, it was pure quartz. I found pure quartz. It seems to be a very important resource to make circuit boards? Um, I don't feel mentally ready for making circuit boards yet. I haven't even left Ming Dynasty and was still left behind in the year 1500 with my musket. Aside from me being old, my eyes saw another boss tower further away in the bigger snowy mountain than the one we were in. There was a lot of interesting structures on the other side, but I had to cross this massive water. I secured the fast travel before the end of the day. And then we continued on our journey into the unknown. There wasn't too much to look at since it was darker than the darkest night. But clearly, this was some ancient city and the inhabitants were extremely high level, so we were really not supposed to be here yet. We found some swirly swirlies here that had a few chests all around them with some sleeping guards. And the obvious choice was to be a thief and snag it all from them. I spotted another flight path I had yet to unlock so I could leave this area because we were incredibly underleveled for this zone. Most of it seems to be like level 38 and upwards and I was only level 24. There was a closed dungeon here too but sadly I couldn't see the level of it. From our travels I had picked up a hypersphere at some point but I was being a bit nervy carrying that around with me since it was my only one. I went over to the starter zone to try capturing some of the starter pals to get my collection bonus to level up a notch. I didn't know of any good way to level up besides capturing and defeating tower bosses since killing pals doesn't seem to benefit that much. I went into a dungeon to collect some more pallium. Capturing all of these pals was expensive for my storage that drained me quite fast of my resources. There was a few mouths to capture but nothing too crazy about this dungeon though. So on day 40, I was basically AFK for a bit while my catress was crafting me up some megaspheres. I was by the trader to sell all of these lobby starter pals I captured the other day to make me rich. Then I spent a while trying to sort out all of the pals in the pal box. It was giving me an aneurysm because of how messy it was in there. Afterwards, I had to go out and assist Akisa since she died to shiny cinnamoth trying to capture it. And she didn't want to respawn in case it would disappear and I understand that. It worked. <laughs> ah, nice. A bit later into the day, Akisa had found a level 29 dungeon she wanted to visit. While she was dealing with the infestations of the cave, I gladly took some pallium for myself. Then we found some weird passageway through here. I didn't know where this was leading us to, but I was assuming it would lead us to the boss fight, which turned out to be a big disappointment. I hate these guys, and they are not even worth my time capturing. We each got one chest, and the one I picked up gave me a blueprint for a handgun. Then back at the base, I was looking at the quality of the pistol, but I do wish it could tell you how much damage it does before you actually craft something. After I had finished sorting out my pals, I went back to the trader to sell the rest of them. Okay, so now we're gonna have to go back to the basics, at least for the bow. I was annoyed walking around with the mining pick, shipping starter pals low in HP for capturing them. 
It wasn't really to my liking. Akisa found another cave that we had to clear as well. The blueprints are important to get, so imagine if you get like a legendary pistol blueprint or so. That would be sick. Boss fight, however, was easy and disappointing, like the freaking loot. <laughs> the next day, Akisa had some interesting pals raiding her, so I kinda just want to capture one of these, um, unique looking pals. Alright, it was time to go out there in the wild to capture some more pals to level up. I made the mistake of attacking a group of Tokotokos, which ended my life in a heartbeat. So after capturing a crap ton of pals, I decided to pay the Pen King a visit. Man, these pangolins were crazy and almost had me freaking killed again. I saw my health just dropping and dropping. Okay, so this felt stupid. But I upgraded the capture rate now in hopes of it improving. Dying to pangolets felt shameful, at least in my mind, since it's literally a starter pal. The next day, I was still out capturing pals to level up until I ran into someone's base out here. I didn't know who it was, but it wasn't Joan or Ikisa. Doing daily visits to the pal trader was becoming a norm now. That was also good for my gold hoarding. Honestly, the day was kinda boring, and I was just capturing a lot of pals and then decided to come clear this dungeon real quick with some easy levels and loot. Well, it's a new day and a new daily dose of metal spawn to harvest. Then I went and captured an Quivern with only a sliver of health left. That was scary if anything. I felt pretty ballsy and wanted to try out my first Reluxorus Lux. Huge looking blob of fattiness with a lot of damage. He really just one shot my Bronchary. What the hell? At least my Dig Toys was effective against him since its weakness was ground type. It didn't take me too many Gigaspheres to capture. But I was pretty happy with the achievement of capturing and defeating my first Relaxorus boss. I got a pretty good passive skill for it too, which I was pretty happy with. Ferocious skill with 20% damage. Oh baby. On day 45, it finally happened. I was finally starting to change up the base a bit to prepare my pals for the upcoming slavery level in the millennia age. I decided to make the second floor above my pal beds my actual house since I needed most of the space in my base for all of the other things I were about to unlock eventually. The placement of the gate made me feel very unhinged, but other than that, the base was starting to look somewhat of a real camp. There was a shiny bee guard below my base I really just had to capture. I love shinies since they are super rare and have incredible damage output. Yeah, you got her! Alright, on day 47, it was finally time to get these assembly lines placed out so I could put my pals to good use. I mean, they have been very useful to me already, but they will be more efficient with better working stations. To get some of the assembly lines working, I had to place out the power generator to make them usable. My big chunky guy would now come to good use, generating power from a generator and such. He looked quite happy at least while doing this, so I wasn't gonna complain. I queued up some cement, and I could have more than just one pal working on the assembly line. Now that's what we're talking about. Working, building, and fighting together like a real team. Oh, I also put out the stump and axe structure that will help with the production of wood. So, Akisa had all of the points into decoration, so she was decorating my room and she was done now. And I must say, this was super cozy. On day 48, my Giga Shield was finally done crafting, so time to get rid of this lowly Mega Shield I've been using for a while. There was all sorts of cool stuff I could make on assembly line now, quite an amazing structure. So a bit later, me and Akisa were gonna go and explore the volcano region together. It's basically at the left bottom corner of the map. We were mostly curious what new things we could find here, and also Akisa wanted to consider looking for a new base spot as well. The mountains here were quite intimidating since they were so fiercely tall, and my environment wasn't exactly the best with stamina. There was a really cool Ragnarok here too that looked like it could be a fine upgrade. A case is spotted an egg on the other side of this pool of lava, but I wasn't gonna take the L of dying over a stupid egg when there were literally eggs scattered all across the place. A bit further into the region, I think I saw one of the first dungeons. <clears throat> it's level 40! I wasn't exactly sure if it was such a great idea to come visit this one just yet. There was a lot of cool stuff, especially this ruined castle. And then there was another dungeon with the same kind of level tied to it. Yeah, but we're gonna have to level up a bit to try attempting it. By the end of the night, I wanted to try capturing this Raptor. 
I had a crap ton of eggs I wanted to open up back at home as well. The next day, I flew into a cave with Zapdos. Sorry, I meant Beacon. Since it was kind of my level, I wanted it. I was trying to be real careful, and with my 10% capture rate on the ball, I managed to get my first Beacon. To get my saddle, I needed only a few more levels to make the saddle, but it shouldn't be too difficult. I'll eventually get it either way. I went out to level up a bit more so I could get that beacon saddle. Akisa got apparently a kitchen from one of the eggs she picked up in the volcano region. It was a really cute doggo. On day 50, we were on our way to the boss fight Musanda Lux. But I saw something really cool on the internet recently. So if you're capturing a pal, you can apparently climb up on a sphere and as soon as it's about to be captured, it will launch you far up into the air. That's a great future right there. The Musanda Lux wasn't too difficult at all to fight. However, the saddle I could make, I saw something about the grenade launcher. That really had me intrigued. I need that. A bit later, I then finally found one of the cutest pals I've ever seen in the game, the Alphidran. It was cute, but it was dangerously strong. I had to keep myself away from its godly attack since it would surely one-shot me. Oh my lord, the tornado was a heat-seeking and it wrecked me completely since my shield got depleted from one of its attacks. Okay, round two. Let's be a bit more careful this time, shall we? Yeah, nope. That stupid Robin Quill ruined everything. It was gonna be perfect if it wasn't for him butting in. I am desperate. I wanted this Elphidran despite dying twice to it. Like, it didn't really want to get into the ball, and I was running low on the Giga Balls. But then, finally, I caught it, and I got that ferocious passive skill. This is gonna be a freaking beast, but also cute. Oh, it's so pretty! It's got butterfly wings! What is it doing? I don't know, but it's great. It's bonking towards the tree. The eggs were finally ready to be hatched. I managed to get a Vixen and a Ragnarok from them. Quite good, actually. The Ragnarok had Kindling level 3, so it was my best one yet for heating up the forge. And Vixen had Handiwork level 3, so definitely a big upgrade. So I put her to work for making me the Musanda Lux grenade launcher, since it was gonna take me forever to craft that thing. I went over to Yuan's base to show off my Musanda Lux with its grenade launcher. I noticed that there was a slightly bad idea to use the weapon among so many trees. It was causing a lot of frame dropping. A bit later, we went over to Petalia to take her down since I haven't defeated her yet. But using the rocket indoors caused her to be pushed out of the arena apparently. Uh, Mike, I think you blasted her through the wall. Really? So we had to redo it without the Musanda Lux. Okay, girl, you got 11 health. Get in the dang ball. We did it. And not too far away, we took the time by doing a dungeon as well, since I needed some more pallium. When we got out of the cave, I saw something incredible. Helsifir. It Hel was a Helsifir. I so wanted to catch this one, but the capture rate was horrible. Hmm, I don't know what I will be using it for, but at least it's good to have for the pal deck. It was time to put my workers to good use. I was in need of spheres badly since I kept running out of them when capturing all of these pals. I then placed out the high quality hot springs for the pals that should help with their sanity so they wouldn't riot against me. Alright, I was running out of space in my base so I weirdly placed down the ranch in a sketchy spot. So hopefully they don't go through the floor. <sighs> I just didn't have any space for the breeding farm here. It was a tough situation. The base bot is cool for farming, absolutely. But when it comes to total use of every structure, it's just not possible here. Unless I make an Ikea, which I don't really want to make. <laughs> the next day, I promised to help Akisa to get her own Elphidran. She wanted this cute monster. Unlucky for Akisa, she died and I tried reviving her, but the Elphidran finished its prey. Akiza was using her strongest pal, Lambert, who couldn't even take one attack without almost dying. The Elfidron was as slow as possible, so I tried killing off the rest of the wild ones around the area. But Akiza had suddenly died to it, so I was gonna throw a ball to give me more time to revive Akiza, but then I catched it instead. That wasn't really the plan, but we'll go with it. I had to snatch a cinnamon nearby as well. 
Oh my god. Akisa had died again and I had to rescue her. I came across the shiny god theme, so I tried my best trying to capture him. His minions around him were incredibly annoying and had to be dealt with. After throwing a few balls to his face, he was finally captured. I was gonna be a nice lad and I gave it to Akisa in case she wants to use him for any breeding. Oh, he beautiful. A bit later, I was out looking for the Elisa B boss fight, but I couldn't see her around at all. I thought the game was bugged or something, and I spent a good few minutes circling the area and searching and searching, but nothing. So I just gave up. Then I went and fought Warsect instead, some big massive buggo. I was thinking it was very similar to the Heracross. I had to try fighting off the Mamores because it's day 55, I think it was about time to do it. He wasn't being too much of a threat anymore to my pals, but capturing him was a different story. I finally caught him after a few gigaballs, so it wasn't too shabby. I was now able to make the improved furnace, the beacon saddle and a lot of other goodies I would need. So I immediately placed down the improved furnace. Also, in the improved furnace, you can start making a new type of ingot called refined metal. This is used mostly for weaponry. There seemed to be some kind of trouble with the mill, which had me wondering what the hell was going on. Then I went out into the sandy area again to grab a bit of coal because I was running low on it. And since I was here, I had to grab another turtle to use it for some more farming. I had placed out the pal box in the desert so my turtles could collect the coal for me in a super convenient way. I had to put the dump box near the pal box at my base since I couldn't really move whenever I was encumbered with stuff. <laughs> Weirdly enough, I had a raid out here in the desert with only a pal box and some turtle. It was kinda funny to see the borbs just getting knocked over by the explosions. And back at base, I had some more eggs for some easy experience. I think it was time to try making myself a better pick. I wanted that refined pickaxe because it sounded way stronger and should probably last for a lot longer. When I was out, I stumbled upon the most incredible area yet. It had both metal and coal in one spot, which I needed a mass amount of. So I put my pal box out because this would be a permanent spot for now. It was just too good to let go and since we had people playing on the server, it was a good call I claimed it before someone else did. I had to build up a few beds and a few other things so they wouldn't get cranky, which they are kinda like now. We have already gone halfway through the days and I yet haven't defeated a second tower boss. But that was about to change because today is the day. Oh no. We were met with the girl who brought in a grass type kind of a pal. Get him, Lambert! What are you doing with that one? Oh, it has 100,000 health to see that. I'm not gonna be surprised. This was kind of obvious for Kisa what she was gonna bring in. Oh. Oh, she's glitching out. We have this now. Oh, you go one tap. Did you see that? <laughs> this is dumb. Definitely helped. I missed. Oh, God, that was not Kitson is doing good. Maybe, maybe not. Oh my god. That was a hard boss. Oh, what? My beacon died. But hey, we finally took down our second tower boss. Then we went over and attempted Verdash, which was a bit bugged. It was stuck in the Michael Jackson type of emotion and then suddenly started attacking again. He was being difficult with me and almost killed me. Wow, I'm almost dead. The capture rate was incredibly bad and I didn't really have any better balls. But after a few minutes of just throwing some balls, he finally went into the Giga Ball. Then I went out to capture a group of goofy Relaxorus for some experience. Man, I both hate and love these Relaxorus. They are goofy looking but very useful. A bit later, I went to quickly go do a dungeon since I wanted some more experience to level up. The boss was a huge Toka Toka, which I definitely wanted to catch. My true spirit animal here. 
a goofy ass bird. I managed to find a mine shaft close to the lake that I was curious where it was leading to. And to my surprise, it was one of the world's bosses. So that means that some of them live in caves and not only on the surface. So both at the Lisa B. Hmm. I was gonna make it low and try capturing it for the PAL deck, but I recalled my beacon too late and it killed it. No. So I went over to the merchant to buy a whopping 500 arrows since it was unbelievably cheap compared to using my own resources to make them. It was just for carefully lowering PAL's HP for capturing starter PALs. I wanted to get myself an assembly line version 2, but I was in need of circuit boards and making polymer was kinda expensive. I went over to Kisa's place since she wanted to try breeding a cryolinx and a robin quill together because apparently you can somehow breed interspecies and get something else in return. But in order to start the breeding process, she needed cakes otherwise they wouldn't produce an egg. On day 59, I went out to a cave where there was a fang globe hiding from me. Afterwards, I just went out and captured a pal to level up. This takes so long to do as well. We are literally playing with default rates except the egg hatching because I don't want to sit and wait 72 hours for an egg to incubate. I tried capturing a beacon as well, but he was being incredibly resistant about wanting to be captured, despite having two freaking HP. I can't damage him anymore. <laughs> so get in the goddamn ball! <gasps> finally! Oh my god. By the end of the day, the egg was finally ready to hatch and he came out as an Anubis. What's so nice about him is that he has handiwork level 4, which means he can craft and build stuff like no other. He's literally Bob the Builder. Alright, I had decided to try making the Sphere Assembly Line version 2. But I had to get some polymer going for it. So apparently ultra spheres require carbon fibers, so I had to make some of that too. You could choose between coal and charcoal to make them. Akisa had another egg prepared for me, so I went over there to pick it up. And then back at the base, I was finally able to make some ultra spheres. They were gonna be great to use. And then we're back to the boring part. Capturing more pals for experience. On this day, I went to the black market seller and I bought some pals and I spent the whole day just capturing a bunch of pals for experience, so nothing too crazy, just me repeating myself. I was just waiting for the egg to finish incubating, I was curious what it would be. Oh my god, it came out as a shiny German tide? Now that's interesting for sure. It may not have the shiny effect, but it has the lucky trait and that's usually only from shinies. So if you guys were curious how we're doing it, we actually used a document we found on the web that tells you, for example, if you breed a lamb ball with a chickpea, it would come out as a mouth. Dealing with flying raiders was so easy with the grenade launcher. Man, I love this thing. I started the next day by opening some eggs. I got the ray hound, which I haven't seen before. Then I went over to Kisa's place to help her with her raider problem as well. I had made it to the big desert area where I discovered the third tower boss to defeat. But I actually had to google them up, so we wouldn't do one that wasn't really suited for our levels. I flew around for a bit in the desert area where I decided to go for that big snowy mountains. But flying over the ocean was kinda cold. I saw something extraordinary. A level 50 shiny van worm. I had no way of capturing it in any circumstance. I then quickly discovered that the snow area in this zone was a bit cold and it almost killed me if it weren't for my quick reaction. That could have been bad, I almost turned into ice cream. I also ran into some weird executioner kind of a guy who did super high damage to my beacon. Those NPCs, man. It's just like a plasma weapon. Bro! Yeah, those guys are quite dangerous. I then stumbled upon the rain bricks. I still haven't gotten one, so time to do what I'm best at. Throwing and wasting pal balls. Akisa told me to come over to her because she had something cool to show me. So we went over to Shellet. Apparently she made a saddle for the Toko Toko. So when you pick it up, you shoot out eggs from its butt that explodes. 
I'm gonna be honest, I didn't see that coming. On day 65, it was time to fight my first German tied boss. It was like 8 levels above me, but I still had hopes. It does lightning abilities as well? Woo! The fight was going on for a very long time. And if I just blink for one second, that could mean... Yeah. Oh my god, lag! And it was getting really close at one point, but then he retreated back to his home. With 3% chance, this was gonna be almost impossible. I started using my Ultra Balls out of desperation. Then it finally happened with 11% capture rate. I captured my first German Tide boss way above my own level. And I must tell you how good that feels when you capture something stronger than you. Akisa and I combined our Anubis to make something for us. And they made a bunch of spheres in a heartbeat. The next day, Akisa wanted to attempt the Mamorest boss fight. But she ended up getting wrecked. Ripping pieces. <laughs> then we were back into the volcano zone to try out this level 40 dungeon. There's a Musanda Lux in here? The dungeon wasn't difficult at all to clear, and the final boss was just the Rayhound that I captured. Akisa had found her new base location where she wanted to move to. The ground was flat and it was pretty. There was a cool looking pal right outside Akisa's new base. It was dead easy to capture though. But there I saw it that really caught my eye. A pure rim knot. Oh no, don't kill it! I wanted this so badly. It was so cool. I could literally be the ghost rider. Woo! And then we were off doing another dungeon again. So now it was actually time to try something new, and that was to touch the lava we have been carefully avoiding. Really? Apparently the lava is just cosmetic and doesn't hurt at all. The boss, however, wasn't anything we wanted, so we were gonna kill it for obvious reasons. But it decided to suicide bomb itself. I understand why. <laughs> While I was out here, a jet dragon apparently appeared in these parts and caught me off guard. Jet dragon? What did it ask me? Oh, what the f- There's a boss here! I got so scared, but he didn't want anything to do with me. The jet dragon is basically a legendary pal. I saw a few shipping containers on the beach, leading me to a town. Flare storm? Oh my god. High quality pal oil. Oh my god, you can buy ammo here! And I'm gonna spend forever making ammo. How much gold do you have? You're buying ammo this time. Akisa had made me crown to wear. It was kind of silly, but I kind of liked it. I decided to make a few refined metal armor sets. It was a big upgrade from an old set. Then I went over and captured Petalia for myself since I let Akisa capture it before. So what's so interesting about Petalia is that she can actually heal you. So healers do exist in this game. I went out to search for the Elisa B boss fight and she was hiding out in a cave system like the Bronze Cherry Aqua did. The fight was annoying with her minions, oh. but I managed to capture her nonetheless. I also fought the Lunaris that wasn't too far away either. It was easily captured, there was no resisting there. I was getting close to beating all of the bosses in the level 30 range, and Veilet was on the list now. Easy boss to capture too, but after that, my new armor I just crafted was brokey. By the end of the day, I was gonna try going for a Wumpo Bhutan, but apparently the damage number from my weapon didn't align with the health bar. What the hell? It said it was about 130 health, and my weapon killed it with 89 damage? Like how? On day 69, I had a shit ton of pals to sell, giving me a huge profit from it. Then back at base, I made myself a Purin saddle. I was excited to try out that horse I just caught. Time to become the ghost rider I was meant to be. I didn't realize it until it was too late. Apparently, I had accidentally sold my high level one and I had kept this one from an egg. Bro, are you kidding me? Then I was crafting up a double barrel shotgun. I was getting there with the weapons. They were just so expensive to make. Alright, so it was time to try out the shotgun fighting the Lylene. <laughs> it was kind of decent. And by the end of the day, I was looking at the Kisa taking down her beautiful base she had. 
but she wanted to live in that new area we found. I was just doing a quick dungeon run in the volcano region to capture a lot of pals. And then something extremely bad happened. <gasps> I managed to get stuck inside the walls and then we were standing above the dungeon. I didn't know what to do in this kind of situation. I didn't want to fall into pitch black hole or anything like that in case it wouldn't save my inventory. But hey, I had a great idea. What if I throw a flyer in just the right angle then mount it to get out? And what do you know? It actually worked. The boss was just a dinosaur luck, so I captured it. The loot I got was pretty good. It was a blueprint for a heat resistant refined metal armor and a technology point. I was then by the trader buying a bit of ammo since I didn't have too much resources to make my own. And then I went by to look at the jet dragon. It was incredibly good looking. I wanted it badly, but I was not ready to capture it just yet. There was a dungeon nearby, so I went in there instead to clear it. I noticed something interesting with the Purin knock. When you mount the Purin, you as the player will do dark damage with the weapons, leading to more powerful shots. Then I went to clear another dungeon nearby. The boss was just a Nightwing, and it wasn't anything special. However, the loot was special. It gave me a blueprint for an assault rifle. I went by Akisa's base a bit later and I noticed how proficient her farm has been. There was just so much stuff laying here. Man, that assault rifle was expensive. It required 80 refined ingots to make. I went over to check out my new metal farm I had been using. It was very productive. I saw something interesting on the horizon. I just had to go over there and look at this island I spotted from before. I was very curious what it was. And as soon as I arrived, it told me it was a wildlife sanctuary. That can't be good. I spotted the German tied Ignis. I had never seen one of those before. So apparently when I jumped off the beacon, I got a message about the criminal activity. So I got a bit frightened by it. Hmm, I was wondering if I could catch anything here. I was quite worried. But then I decided to go for it. Like, how bad could it be? So I shot one of those wiggly noodles to get over to me. This was pretty bad. Like, the health bar was as slow as it could possibly get, and my hyperspheres were struggling, so I switched to the ultra spheres. But then, I got my first germatide Ignis. I wasn't quite sure what was so special about it, but apparently it had kindling level 4. To back at base, I had to try it out on the forge to see its speed. Oh my god. It kind of amazed me how good it actually was. I was making a few circuit boards since I was going to replace my production assembly line to the next level. Then I got over to Akisa to give her an upgraded refrigerator and an electric kitchen grill. Akisa was going to cook me up some delicious carbonara to celebrate. I had to make a bit of gunpowder since I wanted to get some bullets. I queued up a lot of shotgun bullets for my double barrel. I had to go to the desert area to grab some more sulfur for more gunpowder. But then, there was a bushy attacking me out of nowhere, so I just captured him. There was so much sulfur in this area, and I tried grabbing as much as I could, so I didn't have to do it for a while. On day 75, I had my last level 40 world boss to take down, the Sibilix. The fight was easy, and I was being careful not to kill it so I could capture it. Afterwards, I went into the wildlife sanctuary down in the south to help Akisa. There was a lot of pankings around this part, so I could capture them for some easy experience. There weren't just pankings around, there were a few others as well. So I spent most of the day just playing around here and capturing a lot of the pankings. And some other pals. I had just so many of these now, so I could just sell them for a good profit at the trader. Pressing on, I went out in search of dungeons to do since we needed a few blueprints still. At least attempting to find any. There was maybe one or two that resembled a dungeon, but they were closed up unfortunately. Finally, after flying around for a while, I went ahead and cleared the dungeon ASAP. Yeah. After I got out of the dungeon, I got attacked by all sorts of pals, so I had to capture some of them for experience at least. Sometimes, I hate designing worker pals to something. Bruh. It always goes to something different than I'm pointing them at. By the end of the day, 
it was finally time to make this green assault rifle I've been craving for a long time now. I had to go over to the trader to buy some more rifle bullets because today we were gonna try to attempt the third tower boss, Brothers of the Eternal Pyre. Um. Hey Mike, how does water do against lightning? Not good. Use fire though. What is that? So from the looks of things, it seemed to be some kind of electric type. So my dig toys was gonna be perfect for this kind of job. Uh, yeah, sure. I brought electric, by the way. And water. 182 health. I'm just gonna yeah. hide behind a pillar real quick, okay, Mike? I'll be back. Okay. I was incredibly close to getting killed. I was barely walking away with any HP at times. Don't do that. There was something I didn't notice until now. But why is the kids walking around with a bow? Why are you using a bow? Yeah, damn it. I think I got killed by some sort of fire debuff. I'm dead. The lightning spear attack he did was predictable but also very fast. Hard to react to some of them. But we finally got our first Axel and Ozark defeated. Only two more tower bosses left. We can do this. I went over to the Mamoret boss to quickly fight and capture him for some high quality pal oil. We were gonna work on getting an assault rifle for Akisa as well. I don't have to look at Akisa using a bow on a boss fight. So I decided to give Vumpu Bhutan a try again since I still haven't catched him. I was enjoying the extra damage when riding the Purin. It was amazing. Unluckily, I got caught by one of his attacks and my Purin died, but with some incredible luck, I managed to catch him with 6% chance on my Gigasphere. Then I was back in his sandy area again and was gonna give the scorpion called Menacing a try. He looked like a true challenger. I had to be somewhat careful not to kill him since I needed to catch him. My armor was now damaged, so I couldn't no longer screw around. I went into serious mode with my AR. The capture rate was horrible, but I caught him despite that. Easy. The very next day, it was time to take on Astagon. The arena was incredibly dark in here too, making it very hard to spot him. Oh no, go get him Lambert! As soon as we got him low, I basically spammed my spheres despite it being low chance. I was kind of desperate, so I just kept on spamming balls. Alright, it was now time to learn the legendary sphere and get the better furnace. We are getting close to getting legendaries. So, the new furnace allows us to make the pal metal ingots, which will be incredibly important and expensive for us to use, but we need it. Making these ingots seems like it will take a good while, even with kindling level 4. Later into day 80, Akisa and I were gonna try attempting a level 45 dungeon up in the north. We were mostly curious what we could find in here and we tried avoiding the guards, at least some of them. After clearing some of the guards, I saw my first ice reptoro in the cave, so it was time to capture it. The boss inside the cave wasn't anything out of the ordinary, it was just a bandworm crust. We tried capturing it, but with us almost dying to it, we gave up and just killed it. I got a pretty good necklace from the drop at the end, which increased my defense by like 200. And not too far away, there was another dungeon we went over to clear. The boss was literally just an ice reptor, so we were gonna kill it. I didn't care enough about it. Me and Akisa were up to no good and did some shenanigans back at base. It looked so weird having worms stacking. 
I was back in the snow biome to catch myself a snow mammoth rest, but he was being a nuisance and not wanted to get into the ball. Up in this ice area, I stumbled upon something extraordinary. A frost stallion? It's apparently one of the legendaries in the game. Oh well, we went over to do the Ice King Paka fight instead. I wasn't feeling mentally ready to attempt my first legendary just yet. I still wanted the legendary spheres if I'm gonna attempt it. After we were done with the fight, we flew up to the tower boss of the north. This was indeed the last boss fight and we still haven't done the fourth tower boss. Alright, on day 82, it was finally time to make some legendary spheres. I do want to attempt capturing a legendary very soon since we are running out of days. I also queued up a stun baton because with this stick right here you can apparently stun your target when they get electrocuted. That will increase your capture rate when capturing pals for a brief amount of time. So the plan today was to attempt the frost stallion alone. So I threw everything I had at it but I didn't account for how little damage it actually takes. The music that was playing during the fight was just amazing. So this is kind of weird. When it charged me, it went right through the mesh and disappeared. Everything I threw at this for Stallion was just getting one shot. I just kept retreating my pals back and throwing them out, but they all fell one by one. This was hopeless. Well, all my good pals were done, so it was just time to give up and try again later. I came back from my armor and then I quickly skedaddled out of there. So my plan was to try leveling up my Ragnarok for the fight, so it gives me another firefighter against that legendary Yay. boss. Me and Akisa decided to go tame a Susaku for me since it was literally a fire type and would prove to be useful for the fight as well. I was trying out my stun baton, but it was sometimes difficult to use it on this flyer, since I couldn't reach it with my short legs. After like 40 ultra spheres, I couldn't do it anymore, and I used one of the legendary spheres, and it captured instantly. So, Akisa told me to come home, since she found something that would prove to be useful. It was a green blueprint for a pump shotgun. I can't make the shotgun. It is so expensive! And so by the end of the day, I just had to get one instead of using the double barrel. Alright, so it was now day 84 and the plan was to take down the fourth tower boss. I wasn't expecting it to be difficult, and the boss only had a health of 200,000, so it wasn't too bad. The German type was super good to bring for this fight since Valerius is weak to H2O. Wow! Apparently, Valerius got stuck in a structure which made it perfect for us, so we just had to focus on one specific area to damage him. Ready? 9k. Ooh, that was like 5k, dude. That does so much damage, dude. Alright, now we got the fourth tower boss defeated, so the only one in the north was left. But in order to defeat him, we would probably need some legendaries, since it's basically the last tower boss and could prove to be a problem for us with our current setup. So I think it's time for round two of Frostalion. This time around, I got Akisa with me to help me out. We were severely underleveled for this, but we were gonna give it an honest try. Ow, I'm frozen. Akisa was very unlucky and got literally melted down by the boss. But hey, with Akisa's death, the boss actually got stuck in a rock. This was actually good for me. 
since it was no longer moving around, I could focus heavily on headshots for maximum output. I noticed that when I'm riding the Ragnarok, my weapon returns into fire damage, which damaged the boss severely. But I didn't want to risk of losing it since it was my most important pal right now. The Frustalian got out of its prison and it charged towards me, ignoring my pals. I had to be extra careful and get my pals back in their balls before the boss would strike with a one-shot ability. What the hell, Giza? It did 10 damage. Did he... Did it just one-shot yes. that? Yeah, just one-shot my shiny Relaxosaurus. The highest level creature I have. Go, Lambert, go, Lambert, go. Oh. oh! Bye, Lambert. This fight went on for so long that my shotgun actually broke mid-fight. Weapon is damaged. The Frostalion was finally under 1000 HP, and I was getting close to finally being able to capture it. Just a little bit more, we can do this. I was nervous about killing it too, so I recalled Susaku just to be careful, but he got one shot by a charge attack. He killed my Susaku, he wasn't even close. I didn't have many pals left to my name, and a broken shotgun didn't make it easier. 16% capture rate. Yikes. This is gonna be difficult. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I need to lower him more. Oh my god, oh my god. Oof. Oh, come on. Come again, Felvete! Come again! Yes! The level requirement for the saddle wasn't too bad, only a few levels away from it. I was showing it off to Kisa and she fell in love with the Frostallion. The Frostallion was really cute sleeping next to the refrigerator keeping it cool. It's keeping the eggs cool. Oh, that's so cute! And back at the base, I was opening a few eggs of Anubis that Akisa provided to me for experience. And slavery. So by the end of the day, Akisa and I were gonna attempt Blasamut, but then something bad happened. Akisa fell through the floor and eventually ended up dead. Alright, it took Akisa a while to get back, but hey, then it was time to do the Blasamut boss fight. My German tide did such good damage to it. I got incredibly lucky with the catch. Only 8% chance. Ooh, no way. Did it work? Then I flew around the Kisa's base to grab some sulfur for gunpowder. It was getting a bit pricey buying bullets since we weren't spamming world bosses anymore. And back at the base, I gave the Kisa a few legendary spheres since it was time for her to capture her own for stallion. So if you don't capture one of the legendaries yourself, you can't make the saddle. I could have simply dropped the for stallion for her, but she wouldn't be able to learn the saddle that way. The fight was a lot easier to do this time since we knew what we were doing. Like this boss is absolutely no joke. We have to be super careful. We learned from last time that it has abilities that one shot. I even brought in a grenade and it was dog shit. Akiza were out of pals, and the boss was super low on HP. I even got the stun baton in action to help Akiza with her capture rate. It was scary since I got so close to it, but I had no other choice. And again, the Frostalian bent into the mesh. But suddenly, it teleported back onto the ice. Oh? Oh? It did it! When we were back at Akiza's base, she immediately started breeding these horses together since she wanted to merge some of the stats together for a stronger one. Then I went out to the sand dunes again to fight off Anubis. I was gonna punish and then enslave him into my team. Unfortunately, I had to use a legendary sphere to catch it. But hey, at least I got that boss defeated. I was by the trader because I was getting desperate for gold to buy some more ammo. I was consistently running out of it like it was a freaking waterfall. Then I went out and captured a few monkeys and I hit level 48, which means one great thing. I can now finally make the first stallion saddle. 
So Ikisa wasn't level 48 yet, so she can make the saddle. So we were gonna test this by letting her pick up the saddle from the workbench instead to see if it would work. And to our surprise, it actually worked. So you don't really have to be a specific level to use the saddle. That's interesting. It took a really long time to melt some of the ingots to make two of these saddles. But now we have finally two rideable for stallions. Alright, I had a raid to deal with the other day, so it was a perfect time to try out the first stallion. So on day 90, it was finally time to attempt the jet dragon. Akisa literally aggroed it when she arrived. Ooh. He can do fire attacks. That's not good for our uh, frost. Nope, it's not. The jet dragon was on my tail and really didn't want to leave me alone. I almost died to one of his attacks. I threw up my Elphidron to fight dragon versus dragon and it got one shot. <laughs> the fight wasn't as difficult as the first stallion, but it's also because we weren't struggle bossing on this one. Whoa! Oh! How did I dodge that attack? Akisa tried avoiding one of his attacks, but she fried. Oh, I'm down! I was gonna use a stun baton on him, but he was just too far up in the air and I couldn't hit the jet dragon. So after many legendary spheres, I finally caught him. Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh my god! Woohoo! On day 91, I had to do what I have done on every single day. Farm metal. We needed a lot of ingots for bullets. We were at the desert zone again to fight off the Dinosaur Lux boss because I still haven't defeated it. I really couldn't make it any lower. One HP! You literally can't get it any lower. Your odds cannot get any better. It's just sort of like, get in the ball, please. <laughs> oh, finally. Since we were in the zone, we figured to look at the last legendary pals to capture. Palladius and Necromus. The next day, we were fighting Lylene not. I still haven't done that one. The abilities it had were very similar to the first stallion. Oh, that seems bad! Woo! Capturing these high levels was almost impossible with the ultra spheres. I had to use my special legendary balls. Yay! And since we were up here in you the ready? Arctic, I tried capturing my own Ice King Pakia. It was my last ultra ball. Well, the day wasn't that interesting. I was just gathering metal. All right. It was now finally time for the last legendaries. That was a good amount of damage. Oh! Oh my god, Mike. What was that? Necromus was Naruto running towards me while we were trying to heavily focus on Palladius. So, Necromus did one simple attack and it ended my life and the Prestallions. Oh? So I rushed back to assist Akisa because we couldn't let this chance go to waste after all of this effort. Okay, next Frost Alien. Akisa got melted as well, so now I was all alone oh here. Oh god! Oh god, okay, yeah, that killed me. I tried my best to stay alive until she would arrive. Otherwise, if we both die, they will heal to maximum. They started running away from me for some reason. I guess we just ran too far away from the roaming area. And for some reason, Palladius completely ignored us so we could focus on Necromus. Necromus was finally getting low, so it's almost about time to try capturing him. I couldn't afford to get hit anymore. I had to capture this one right now. Oh! My health! Akiza came over to electrify him so we would get more capture rate. And when I threw this last legendary sphere, I died, but I also captured him. I died. Ah. No stamina. Oh, wait a minute. You might be about to tame it, though. You're kidding me! You tamed it! When I died as well. The fight had been going on for such a long time that my first stallion had fully revived. 
And since I yeah. caught Necromus, I threw him out so he could attack his friend. Oh, yeah. I was carefully reducing its HP with the AR. And then we ran in with our stun batons. Oh. 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 Attributed. Finally, after a long while, I caught the last legendary. Yes. Heck yeah! Nice. Now we have all of them. Now we have all of the legendaries. I was still missing a few tames on the pal deck to capture though. This time. I were visiting the wildlife sanctuary and I saw an orserk that I haven't caught yet. There was the Lileen nearby too and I only had the other version of it but not the original so I had to capture it too. It seems to spawn all sorts of weird pals like this Astagon but I was actually looking for something called a shadow beak. And for some reason, I had discovered it, but I didn't spot it. I even rewatched the recording over and over several times, but I saw nothing. I went circling the area multiple times in order to get the Phalaris or Shadow Beak to spawn in, but nothing. The kids had a few things to show me in her base, some frog shares and a pangolet TV. A freaking pangolet TV? Are you serious? Since I couldn't find any shadow beaks, Akisa actually bred one for me that I only had to incubate for now. Then I flew over to the first wildlife sanctuary where I spotted a grizzbolt that I haven't caught yet. Yeah. On day 97, huh. I finally spotted a phalaris. This is the first sign of it and my time to catch it. I managed to get spotted by the guard and the best way to get rid of it was just to reconnect. Alright, Akiza and I felt ready to attempt the last tower boss. Last Ooh. boss fight. She looks so spooky. Obviously we're fighting Rogue from the X-Men. Or Storm. Huh. Storm from X-Men. Man, the Shadow Beak is freaking awesome. Oh my god. Look at Shadow Beak. Akisa told me to bring something with explosive damage, and I brought my Toka Toka with me. <clears throat> oh my god, of course you did. Ah! This felt pretty much pointless. We didn't have enough juice to defeat this boss. After a fierce battle against time, we just didn't have enough damage output to take it down. So we failed against him with his 14,000 health. I'm out. Yeah, we were really not ready for it, and now we're pretty much out of resources to Whoa, make bullets. Alright, now my Shadow Beak was finally ready to be hatched. It didn't have any amazing stats, but it was mostly as for the PAL deck. So now we were once forced to make bullets again and prepare for the boss fight. And by the end of the day, we were cooking up a lot of ammo and then a saddle for Akisa's Relaxorus. We decided to spam the Axel boss fight to level some of the pals we had. It was just in order for us to take down the Shadow Beak boss fight. We needed a pal that had good dragon damage. So basically, Shillit you can get from the starter zone is basically the best one for taking down the Shadow Beak since dark types are weak against dragon damage. And Shillit applies dragon damage to my weapons when I'm mounted on it. So we forgot about the enhancing of pals, so we used a lot of these souls to make them stronger. Alright, we were back for round 2. We opened up by blasting the boss with everything we got, so we got as much damage as possible in the start. The damage buff I got from the riding on Shillit was really strong, but Shillit couldn't take any damage at all. It was very weak. So I threw out my other pals in the meantime, Shillit was passively healing out.
we did it! Yeah! Oh my god. We did it with a noodle and a lamb. <laughs> and that is our last oh tower god. boss down, <laughs> finally. I was looking through the PAL deck and we discovered I was only missing a branch area, Aqua and a Hangyu Chris. So Akisa was gonna breed me up a Hangyu Chris while I went out to capture the branch area. I flew out to the snow biome and I finally spotted it out there, but sadly we had gone past day 100. It's sad that I was only missing the Hangyu Chris and it only spawns on night. But yeah, I might not have completed the PAL deck in time since I was only missing that particular one. But I got all of the tower bosses defeated, I built the cozy base and I catch all of the legendary PALs, so I kinda see this as a victory. But despite all this, I hope you guys enjoyed the video so please consider subscribing and liking the video so I can continue releasing good content for you guys. And maybe check out the rest of my videos if you made it this far. Thank you.